Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, a very warm welcome to Convoco. We are about to build a bridge to connect with Convoco 2016 tonight. The rise, the crisis of authority. Please allow me to first venture some thoughts concerning the concept of an institution before we embark on our debate. Institutions fulfill a key function in society. Institutions limit the arbitrariness of individual action. Tame yourself is the basis of every civilization and the basis of what we call Bildung in German, education in English, Padaya in Greek, Humanitas in Latin, Vinaya in Sanskrit, and Wenhua in Chinese. On our way towards education, institutions have played an important role and continue to do so today. Institutions represent two virtues which individuals often lack. They combine a long-term purpose with a notion of the common good, and they can learn from the experiences of many and incorporate them. In a Convoco lecture, the English philosopher Roger Scruton explained that human beings, by being members of institutions and identifying with them, learn to not act without giving up their responsibility. Institutions cause a delay in human action and exercise an educational impact on their members. The acting person becomes aware of the fact that his or her action has a long-term effect and that he or she is thus responsible in the long run. The example Roger Scruton gave was the figure of Hans Sachs in Wagner's Master Singers of Nuremberg, the Meistersinger von Nuremberg. Within the logic of his membership, Hans Sachs helped overcome two spontaneous decisions made by two irresponsible characters. On the one hand, Pogner's decision to marry his daughter Eva to the winner of the competition and Walter's decision to run away with Eva. Both ideas are examples of short-term thinking, whereas Hans Sachs represents the responsibility of the institutions that made him, as Wagner smartly shows, it is beings like Hans Sachs on whom the establishment of institutions depend, public institutions are important factors for the maintenance of societal structures. Because the social order results from the interaction of interests, ideas, and institutions. And the social order determines the living conditions and values of human beings. In other words, institutions protect society from individual arbitrary action and integrate the latter into well-organized social processes. The Federal Constitutional Court would be such an institution. It guarantees the legitimacy of the exercise of power because power, even if it is based on democratic elections, does not easily translate into law and rights in a constitutional state. Power must correspond to certain requirements of legitimacy. Constitutional courts make sure that this is the case. It is legitimate to have different opinions about the common good in a democracy. The Constitution combines these differences by proposing principles and rules shared by all. The constitutional jurisdiction is important because it guarantees this fundamental consensus. Unlike purely bureaucratic systems, an institution can take responsibility. It acts as a legal entity, which is responsible when someone acts in its name. According to Roger Scruton, institutions are very important in our modern world. They are the best we have in order to give a long-term perspective a chance. 
Institutions help us learn how to act loyally, dedicated, and responsibly with respect to other generations, and how a world feels that adopts in its very structures the notion of personality. Ray Kurzweil, the futurist, defined institutions as programs for cultural transmission handed down to future generations. Alas, institutions tend to become complacent after a period of success. Their grand virtue, the establishment of a collective responsibility, can become its greatest vice within a short lapse of time, collective irresponsibility. Let me therefore add a wo word of caution. Studies have shown that in order to have democracy work, institutions are more important than the interaction of citizens. Generally spoken, people have more trust in institutions than in individual decision makers or even governments. If their trust is, however, shattered because of the irresponsibility or the lack of transparency in decision-making processes, the consequences may be severe because it means the loss of power of the principles on which our democracies rely. The trust in institutions is the yardstick of the stability of a political system. Institutions are, therefore, powerful agencies, and yet we know that power comes never alone. It is always accompanied by powerlessness. Power and powerlessness are mutually dependent. They are the two sides of one coin. Professor Kai Conrad of the Max Planck Institute showed this well when he described the ECB to the Forum in Salzburg. In the course of the Euro crisis, the ECB mandate was continuously extended. In an emergency, it can save a member state from national bankruptcy. As far as negotiating theory is concerned, however, such a broad mandate weakens the bank. In order to play the Samaritan, it has to use its powerful instruments in order to solve a crisis, instead of independently pursuing a clear monetary policy goal. The ECB can thus fall prey to its own capacity for action. Tonight, we will also ponder the question to what extent our institutions are powerless on a global scale. Are we witnessing the crisis of our institutions? At this point, I should like to once again cordially welcome Professor Buch and thank her for joining us tonight. She has been the Deputy President of Deutsche Bundesbank since May 2014. Deutsche Bundesbank as the Central Bank of the Federal Republic of Germany and as a member of the European System of Central Banks is one of the most important public financial institutions in Germany, in Europe and in the world. It contributes to financial stability and since it is a national central bank which determines the key interest rate and is a source of liquidity, it is a rather powerful organization. Deputy President, the floor is yours. Thank you.